It's been a while since the end of Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1. The final episode of the season featured a beautifully animated fight between Yuji and Nobara versus Esso and Kechizu, two of the nine death painting wombs, with our main protagonists coming out on top. However, Choso, the elder brother of the two, soon finds out about the deaths of his younger brothers through Suguru Geto, spelling the beginning of a new series antagonist. Now so far, we've only seen three of the nine death painting wombs as mentioned before. But what if I told you I figured out who the six remaining cursed wombs are? Now this video will be more for the anime onlys, but don't worry manga readers, I'm sure you'll get some information out of this that you probably didn't even know before. And I have a mini theory for you guys near the end of the video. So without further ado, let's get into it. So for those of you that need a refresher, the Cursed Wombs, otherwise known as the Death Paintings, are nine special grade cursed objects born from a hybrid of human and cursed spirit blood. For 150 years, with only the faintest notion of one another's existence, they survived, sealed away. Choso, Esso, Kechizu, and their six other siblings. But have you ever stopped and wondered why they were given these names in the first place? No? You don't care? Because you actually have a life and don't have to go looking for this stuff? Well, okay, don't worry, because that's what I'm here for. See, it turns out that these names weren't just thought out randomly. In fact, they're actually based off of, get this, human decomposition. Specifically, a type of Japanese painting that depicts these nine stages of decomposition. Nine death paintings. K Kuso, Kusos, Kus, wait, hold on, let me check this real quick. What she said. So this genre of traditional Japanese art emerged during the 13th century and was heavily influenced by the Buddhist text titled Discourse on the Great Wisdom, in which the nine stages of human decomposition are the following. Choso, Esso, Kechizuso, Naranso, Shooso, Tanso, Sanso, Kotsuso, and Shoso. Now you can pause the video yourself to read the individual descriptions of the other six, but I want to get into the first three that we've been introduced in the anime, starting off with Esso, who is supposed to embody the stage of rupture. Now at first glance, Esso looks human-like. There's not really much rupturing going on. This could be in part due to the fact that he's only at the earlier stages of decomposition, which is decay. Recall that Esso was very self-conscious about his back, which has this really gross-looking face. This would imply where Esso could be quote-unquote decaying from. In this case, the tearing of flesh we see in the description would be in this clip where Esso bends forward. Essentially, he's tearing open the eyes of the face to grant him wings. Kechizu, on the other hand, is a more straightforward case. Kechizuso, or the exudation of blood, is perfectly captured by his character design. Notice all the bloods and fluids pouring out of Kechizu's body that's very indicative of the third stage of death according to Kusozu. But note that Kechizu looks less human compared to Choso and Esso, which I think backs the earlier theory that Esso is only at the onset of decomposition, but is still recognizable as being human-like. Kechizu's character design essentially shows us that as we go further down the line, the death paintings begin to look less and less human. It sort of mirrors the natural stages of death that is stated in the Kusozu. But now you might be thinking, when looking at the description of the first stage, Choso doesn't look like he's bloated in the anime at all, or as we call it nowadays, dummy thick. Now, I do agree that Choso looks the most human out of the three, but doesn't it make sense for him to look that way? To me, 
Choso looks like someone who immediately just died. And while he hasn't started <clears throat> bloating yet, he actually resembles the first stage of death that medical practitioners still use. This is what's called pallor mortis, or paleness which happens in the first 15 to 120 minutes after death. Now it's starting to make sense why Choso looks like he hasn't left his house in over a year. Wait, that's me. Okay, anime onlys, we're about to cross manga territory from here, so spoilers ahead. Now, manga readers, we know that the names of the six other siblings are already confirmed to be the same ones we talked about earlier. And we're also told that only remains are left of them, meaning they're probably dead. But one thing struck me while I was reading the documentation of the Kusozu, and it's about this other artist called Fuyuko Matsui that's making her own Kusozu piece. And at the very bottom of page 32, with the endnote citations, believe it or not, you can see that she intends to complete the series with a tenth piece showing the subject prior to death. And I saw this and I thought, a tenth piece? A tenth death painting? A tenth sibling? And then it hit me. Who is this supposed 10th sibling that Choso keeps telling us about? And I'm sure you know it as well by now, so say it with me. Itadori Yuji. Could this potentially lead to something grim that might happen to our main character Yuji? Probably not, because I'm literally writing this at 3am, so if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe for more of my content. But as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.